there are five different versions of scene sequel writing. There are also five different versions of motivation reaction units. And they're called by different names, but there are five different versions of each. I'm not going over all that right now. That's takes me a whole book to go over all that. So, 1930s, Walter S. Campbell taught the scene as meeting, purpose, encounter. And the sequel, well, encounter, and then win, lose, or quit. It wasn't just disaster. Uh, the sequel, you have to explain the state of affairs and the state of mind of your, at least your main character. Swain, in the 60s, modified that to the scene, goal, conflict, disaster, and sequel, reaction, dilemma, decision. Now, I said there are five different types, and these were all written for writing short stories. And Phyllis Bentley, a great writer who wrote at least one masterpiece, Inheritance, uh, later in life wrote, oh, I think it was 17 short stories. And they're published, most of them in, well, I'll just, this is an excerpt from my book. <laughs> I wrote this about eight, seven, eight years ago. Um, Chain of Witnesses, published in 1954, long before Swain uh, book, uh, Tricks and Techniques of the Sewing Writer was published, where he had his version of scene sequel. Now, again, people who haven't uh, really learned or looked into scene sequel writing don't often know there's five different types of scene sequel writing and don't know that short stories used to be published as scene sequel writing, the one that uh, Swain adopted. Now, he narrowed it. This is uh, like an, um, uh, on a uh, ladder of larger and smaller, this is larger. The entire short story um, is a scene sequel. And this is a short, short story uh, published in Ellery Queen Mystery Magazine. Miss Bentley is the character. I'm sorry, Miss Phipps is the character. Bentley is the writer. And she wrote a wonderful line in this story. Her character, Miss Marion Phipps, is a writer of short stories and novels. It's a stand in for Bentley. Phipps writes mystery novels and true crime novels. Uh, and in this story, Ms. Phipps says, one of the primary functions of the novelist is to pursue a chain of cause and effect from end to end. She does that in this short crime mystery story. Ms. Phipps, this is the goal. Ms. Phipps arrives by train on a Wednesday to visit her niece and her husband for a couple of weeks. Phipps has been trying to think of a nice little story to give her niece as a thank you, but without success. Uh, that evening, that Wednesday evening, her niece and husband say that they had planned to serve a sumptuous bird, but their cook, Miss Hoyle, Mrs. Hoyle, had to reschedule. In the conversation, Miss Phipps learns that Mrs. Hoyle has never before missed her Wednesday evening cooking. Uh, Ms. Phipps decides to ask Ms. Hoyle why she missed, hopefully making a humorous story and solving the mystery of the missing Mrs. Hyde. It will be Ms. Phipps' gift story to her niece. So that's her goal. 
and uh, uh oh, doesn't work out that way. Conflict the next night, Thursday. Mrs. Hoyle is dreadfully upset about the murder of the local train station manager. Miss Phipps has a difficult time <coughs> getting the conversation around to why Mrs. Hoyle missed her regular Wednesday appointment. Hoyle's answer directs her to her grandson, who asked to come ask her to come with he and his wife to the circus on Wednesday. His true motive was wanting his grandmother, Mrs. Hoyle, to have a talk with his wife to help resolve a family problem. This was successful, but the question in Miss Phipps' mind is now. Why did the grandson specify this Wednesday and not some other night? It is arranged, <coughs> excuse me, for Miss Phipps to go interview the grandson, Ted. This will continue through a chain of witnesses, the story's title. Seven witnesses in all. Miss Phipps and the reader are learning a chain of cause and effect facts. The end of the scene, disaster. Unable to yet interview two witnesses, the police unexpectedly come to interview her niece's husband, Mrs. Phipps' niece's husband. The account books for his business are missing. This can only occur by theft, but there is no evidence of theft. The police suspect that the niece's husband destroyed the books to cover up missing funds and missing inventory. The business partner is arriving by train to make that accusation. Sequel. Reaction. The news is horrifying. The young husband could go to prison. Her niece's husband. Dilemma. Miss Phipps' behavior seems heartless. She appears unconcerned about her niece in a situation but wants to work on her story. She is pondering over her story, which now everyone knows she's writing. She thinks and comes to a revelation, which is not revealed to her niece or to the reader. <coughs> what has she discovered? She wants to continue and interview two more witnesses. She interviews one and her attitude brightens. The final witness she wants to interview is the business partner who is coming to accuse her niece's husband of theft. In front of the police and several of the witnesses she interviewed, Miss Phipps accuses the business partner of stealing the missing inventory, stealing the missing account funds, and stealing the account books and murdering the train station manager. At first, this sounds like wild defamation. But then Miss Phipps puts together the story of the chain of witnesses, and there is no other conclusions. Conclusion, all mysteries solved, murder solved, and her niece and her husband, her niece's husband are saved. It is a wonderful short little mystery story, perfect for the Ellery Queen Mystery Magazine in 1954. And it fits very nicely into the scene sequel storytelling pattern, which uh, Phil Bentley wrote about, calling it scene setting, um, in one of her books about writing. So, um, as I said, there's Five different versions of scene sequel writing and five different versions of the shorter aspect, motivation reaction units. Now, I talked the other day about uh, in the Dwight Swain using scene sequel writing in a Western short story, uh, which was uh, Gambling Man originally published as the Sentimental Gentleman of Death. So uh, uh, these are both terrific short stories. Uh, and I'll talk about 
uh, more about this another time.